Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Joe Bladick and I'm here with Sam Thompson and we're going to get started on how to take money out of your house to pay bills, which is something that we get a lot of questions on, don't we Sam? Yeah, it's a really good video because I think that um, you know, people are seeing house prices rising. They maybe have questions about, you know, what even is equity? How can I access it? You know, a lot of people, especially, you know, still coming off of that new year, maybe they're in a position where they're still, you know, trying to recover from that Christmas debt. So definitely is a big question we get asked a lot. Yeah. So let's get started. So taking money out of your house to pay bills. I know that it sounds a little bit strange, but this is pretty common and we see it a lot. Yeah, exactly. I think um, it is a very common question um, for home buyers that want to be able to, you know, use their home for more than just, you know, a place to live. We talk about a lot on the show how it's that that third income where every year it's gaining that money. Um, but let's just take a little look at, um, you know, how we can actually refinance and how we can make this uh, specific scenario happen. So I guess that starts us off chatting just really quickly about existing equity and, you know, what equity is. So as soon as you purchase a home and you're making those mortgage payments, you know, uh, if you're someone who's lucky, you've locked or not locked in, but you're in one of those variable rates where, you know, almost all of your money is going towards the principal. All of that money that you're paying off is growing your equity in your home. And I know that we've seen a huge increase in everyone's appreciated equity since you know we've seen house prices skyrocketing hey joe we really have sam we wouldn't have been able to predict this especially with COVID 19 <laughs> hitting in uh what is it now uh a couple of years ago i can't yeah. believe but uh yeah i remember when COVID hit we did see house prices lag just slightly and then all of a sudden we've seen a straight climb to the top since then mm -hmm. and there's a lot of appreciation that has uh been realized there and a lot of clients are sitting on this equity. And I find that when I speak to my clients these days or when, when we're talking about their mortgage, they just don't realize how much available equity they have at their mm -hmm. fingertips. Uh, as, as we mentioned here, between December of 2020 and December of 2021, Canada had the average appreciation of 17.7%. That is a massive figure because when you look at mutual funds, or stock market. I mean, this is a pretty high return. Yeah, exactly. Um, and just looking at, you know, at the average house price that we had seen in December of, you know, 713,000, that brings your appreciated value up to 839,000 and change. So you were looking at, you know, almost $100,000, a little over $100,000 just in a single year. Um, so, you know, when you're owning a home, you're making those payments, it's appreciating year over year. It's that third income that no one really talks about. No one thinks about their home is actually earning basically a hundred thousand dollar salary almost um, from 2020 of December or sorry, December of 2020 to December of 2021. So with all of that freed up equity, that huge nest egg that you're sitting on, um, you can actually put it towards a lot of different um, purposes. We've seen a lot of files where clients are using equity for, you know, tons of different options, whether it's buying a second home, any of those things. Um, but again, we're just going to look at today because again, maybe new buy or sorry, people who own homes are also looking at the market and thinking they don't want to move. They don't want to get into the market where house prices are so high. So they just think, well, you know what? I might as well stay where I am, refinance, get some of that equity and put it towards paying off some bills. But yeah, let's explore that because that is something uh, I'm sure a lot of our viewers just don't really realize how it works. So let's get mm -hmm. into the details of that. Yeah, of course. So we're going to start just looking at John and Sarah. Um, the client's names have obviously been changed um, for confidentiality, um, but yeah, they've yeah. been homeowners since 2018 when they made their first purchase. So they were eager first time buyers who had good credit, low debts and a high um, starting down payment, which is you know, again, it's tougher to have that kind of scenario in today's market, but in 2018, it was still possible. Definitely. But I mean, it happens over the last three and a half years, they've accumulated debts. And you know what? They've also noticed that they have run behind on their property tax bills. And now with all that debt behind them, 
I mean, it's easy to feel trapped in that situation. So in this case, because they have all this equity and rates are low, a refinance ends up being a perfect option to offset these debts. Mm -hmm. And looking specifically at what the numbers are. So when they had purchased back in 2018, they got a house for $400,000 and their rate was about 3.19%, which, you know, in some cases still feels high, but we're slowly, slowly creeping up to that mark. Um, but they have, you know, consistently been making their mortgage payments. The balance of their mortgage is down to just over 290000 and they're making payments of roughly 1545 per month. So again, that's a relatively standard mortgage um, for that property, you know, price and rate. Yes, definitely. And what we're looking at now, a few years later, is since they bought their home for 400000 their home is now worth 750000 and you may think this is quite a big number and quite a big jump, but this is what we're seeing across Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have the opportunity now to take out a new mortgage to replace their existing mortgage. So in this case, the new mortgage would be $356,218.79. And specifically, it covers uh, standard items we see often, Sam, that people are paying out on their refinances. And in this case, it always usually includes the existing mortgage, which is $290,718.79. And then we have uh, a bucket of debt here, uh, a $30,000 car loan, a $20,000 line of credit, and the property tax arrears of $9,500. I'm sure that would be a stressful situation to be in if you didn't have the cash to make those payments. And when you add it all up, it does seem like a big number of 59,500. And you may seem, well, the mortgage company is not really gonna look good on me because they're gonna see I have all this debt and they might not be able to give me an approval for this because they're gonna see, you know, why do I have all this debt? But it's actually the mortgage company would want to take on the debt and put you in a better situation. You will have a mortgage penalty typically to pay off the old mortgage. And Sam, that usually is about a three months interest penalty or an interest rate differential. I mean, we would have to look into that, but we have an approximate amount here if it's applicable of 3,500. And then the legal fees of 2,500, which again is if applicable, because some lenders do pay for that as a thank you for gaining your business. But this is a standard situation we see often, Sam. And uh, if you're in this situation, know that if a lender is looking at your file, they're going to actually think that putting these debts into the mortgage is a better uh, way for you to proceed. Yeah, exactly. I mean, again, like we we're saying, it, it definitely can seem stressful because, you know, even if you break it down and it feels small that you only have $59,000 of debt, each of them are run on their own interest rate. They're all being paid and they all have that minimum requirement. So it can make, you know, whether it's the beginning or end of the month, very stressful. If all of these are due at the same time, then, you know, you're going to be stuck, you know, stressing over paying all of these. So let's just see what the result was as they refinanced into this new mortgage amount. So they were able to lock into a lower rate than they had before at 3.04% on a five-year fixed term. So their payments, if you look at the next um, section there, are now $1,505.86 per month on a 30-year amortization versus what they were even originally paying when they first purchased the house, which was $1,547.75. So almost $50 a month is being saved. Um, and again, they were able to you know, consolidate or lump together all of that debt into their mortgage. This is pretty fantastic. And I see this scenario playing out often in our own clients. I mean, with lowering your mortgage payments and uh, having it all under one single payment, you're going to have less stress going into the next month and you'll have more cash flow. And then you might be thinking to yourself, well, if I include this debt into the mortgage, I'm actually going to pay more interest and have more debt. Well, it could be that way, but you also have more cash flow that now you have the deciding factor to decide where to use. You can actually use that now to accumulate more debt, or you can purchase more things, you can save, or you can actually take that money and then use it as a prepayment back onto the mortgage for the minimum payments that you were paying elsewhere and mm -hmm. do like a debt snowball. But that's for another video. <laughs> 
Yeah, so this definitely was a success story and something that, again, is um, more and more prevalent as we're seeing that appreciated equity growing and growing. So if you're at all curious, you know, about using your equity, um, even if you want to just, you know, get an idea of how much equity you'll have in your home, um, you know, maybe this scenario rang true for you where, you know, the debts are, are stacking up, you know, the end of the month becomes quite stressful, but hey, you've been paying into your mortgage for the last two to three years, that ho uh, sorry, that house has been, you know, a third income for you, um, then definitely reach out to us. We'd love to chat with you to see, um, you know, give you an idea of how much equity that you have and see about um, some possible, you know, situations or solutions that we can chat through with you. That's great, Sam. And uh, yeah, give us a call, private message. We'll be happy to do that with you. In the meantime, uh, Sam, thank you very much for that great information. For all you viewers out there, Sam Thompson is a mortgage agent that's been in the Barry area for almost two years now. He originally moved from Ottawa and has been with our brokerage, Mega Mortgage, powered by Vericle, Lend at Ease. Uh, and it's been a great uh, time having you on today's program. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, it was a great topic. I'm happy to be able to share the information with you. Um, and of course, anybody who doesn't know Joe, um, Joe is a mortgage broker um, in the industry for over 11 years, if you can believe that, um, but definitely super knowledgeable um, in the mortgage industry, uh, living up in Aurelia with his wife and two kids. So thanks for having me, Joe. And it was great to have your insight in the presentation as well. Thank you very much, Sam. And uh, for everyone watching today, thanks for watching. Feel free to like, comment, share, and uh, send us a message about our video. We'll see you next time.